I, I know this is sounding like we're designers and marketers. We're, you know, we're developers. We're not designers and marketers, but I would argue that in this phase of the game, the earning the deeper look, that's exactly what we are. Today I'm going to tell the story about how I hired my replacement, and that was a junior iOS developer, and it was their very, very first job. And throughout this process, I reviewed like over 100 submissions, and we're going to talk about the insights I gained to help you out because, wow, uh, in general, the developer community really, really needs some help in marketing themselves. Before we dive into all that, I got to thank today's sponsor real quick, and that is Squarespace. If you want to build that iOS developer website or portfolio real quick, just to get it up and running, check out squarespace.com to get started today. Now, this story does require some disclaimers, right? Of course, anytime you talk about hiring, it's not one size fits all. So many different companies hire in so many different ways. Take this story as just an example of how I did it at a small, you know, five, six, seven person startup in San Francisco. And the insights I give are going to be applicable to companies where, you know, one or two people are in charge of hiring and they're actually reviewing the resumes, right? This may not be applicable if you, you know, you're going to a huge company with thousands and thousands of applicants that you just get thrown into a system and your resume gets scraped and all that stuff. It's not going to be applicable to that. But for all the smaller companies where it's actually like humans, you know, reviewing all the submissions, I think this is going to be very valuable. And again, this isn't meant to be the end all be all of advice. It's just one data point. If you have other suggestions or insights about hiring, leave a comment, let's talk about it. So let's talk about this kind of uh, unique process that I did to hire my replacement. And, and it's unique because I have this YouTube channel. It's a little bit of a platform, right? I have a, a audience of a lot of developers. So I put out a video in January of 2018. So almost a year ago saying like, hey, I'm looking to specifically hire somebody for their first iOS dev job. Like a way to give back to the community, right? Because I know a lot of you are struggling to get that first job. And so I basically took submissions from my audience. So uh, I get to hire an iOS developer at the company I'm working for. And it doesn't matter if you have, you know, only a little bit of experience or this is your very first iOS developer job. That's fine. Uh, do you want it? And for some quick context, the reason I was able to do that is because I had been open with this company that I was moving on in a few months. So there was gonna be a few months turnover period where I would be able to work with this you know, brand new developer, train them up, all that good stuff. And then I was not like fully leaving, I was gonna consult. So like I would always kind of be there. So again, that's just the context on like why we could hire a first time junior dev. And in the end, we ended up hiring Chris for his very first iOS developer job. He's been there since the beginning of April of 2018, still there to this day, kicking ass, doing an awesome job. So overall, the process worked out. So let's get to the, to the meat of things here, kind of the help I want to give, because again, I reviewed over hundred submissions and it, it, it didn't take much to stand out. Um, and, and real quick, the overall context of this kind of video is there are certain processes through the interview, right? Like this is how to like get the interview. This is passing that superficial, Unfortunately, judging a book by its cover, fortunately that's how it happens a lot in this phase, right? You're, we're trying to earn that deeper look. You know, when, when people look at your portfolio, your resume, you know, they're just skimming it real quick and you go into a, like a yes or no pile. And if you're in the yes pile, now it's like, okay, I'll, I will give them a deeper look. So what this whole video is about, all this advice is going to be how to earn that deeper look. So the biggest takeaway I think for this video, and it kind of permeates into all my examples here is to, make it easy for the reviewer, right? Because like I said, in my example, I was reviewing over a hundred submissions. I was just one person doing this on top of my full-time developer job. I didn't have time to give everybody the deeper look. So those people that made it easy for me, like I didn't have to track down information. Like for example, when I said, hey, DM me or email me, I got a lot of DMs that were like, hey, I'm interested. And I would have to reply to them. Do you have a portfolio or a resume I can look at? But you, you can see where I'm going with this is when I'm dealing with a hundred submissions, like it's hard for me to like constantly go back and forth. If you give me all the information I need up front, you know, that makes it easier for the reviewer. And that's just one example. We're gonna get into a bunch of ways to make it easy for the reviewer. But again, the more easy it is for the reviewer, the more likely you are to earn that deeper look. You've already made a great first impression. And to give a concrete example of that, I mean, it's not hard. It may seem like common sense to a lot of you out there, but Trust me, I got plenty of responses that didn't do this, but just give a short, quick little intro. Hey, Sean, interested, my name is this, give a little bit of background. Uh, here's my GitHub, here's my portfolio, here's my LinkedIn, here's my website, here's my resume. You, you may not have all of those, but you know, some permutation of that. And here you go, here's the information. Like, simple stuff. And then that brings me to GitHub, right? We're all developers, we all probably have a couple projects on GitHub. If you're gonna use your GitHub to 
show off and, and use that to hopefully get you interviews or get jobs, take some time to create a visual readme. Longtime followers of me are probably like, okay, Sean, we get it, I know, because I always preach this. But again, when I was getting 100 something submissions, so many people just sent me like GitHub repos. And, and in the readme, no description, no nothing. Like, like the only way for me to find out about the project, if it's an app, is to download it, build it on my phone, figure it out, or, or download it and dig through some code. Again, make it easy for the reviewer. That is a lot of work to do when you got 100 something submissions back to the GitHub readme. If in the readme, you have a paragraph telling me what the app does, some tech information about the technologies you used, uh, some screenshots of the app so I can see what the app is along with that description of what the app does, that goes a really long way. Again, you're making it easy for the reviewer. And again, let me clarify. I don't wanna say like the reviewer is a spoiled brat. They have, they're not willing to work. You have to remember the situation when you're on the other side uh, you know, of the table, you have 100 plus submissions to review. You can't dig into everybody. There's just not enough time. So again, make it easy. Make those readmes very informative, very visual. That will go a long way. And just to be clear, I'm not saying the code in your GitHub doesn't matter. No, remember, we're focused right now on earning the deeper look. Digging into your code, like that's the deeper look. But if you make it hard for me and your GitHub doesn't look great, like you may not even get that deeper look. Next up, let's talk about having a personal website or portfolio. You've heard me talk about this a lot lately, but it's just true. It, it really, really makes you stand out. Uh, again, of the 100 plus submissions, I would say only seven to 10 had a personal website or portfolio that I could go that had pictures of their work, information about them, their background, uh, just really showcasing who they were. Again, about seven to 10 out of 100 submissions. Like you really, really stand out. I, I can't stress enough how important it is to have a nice looking good website. And again, we're talking about earning that deeper look. That is the most efficient way to get that deeper look. If somebody sends me their information, I click on their website, the website is well designed, the information hierarchy is nice, it showcases their work, and it, like it just says so much about that person in the matter of three seconds, that first impression of the website, that they are almost certainly going to get the deeper look. Again, they gotta pass the deeper look, but if you want the most efficient, quick way to earn the deeper look, have a great looking website. And again, I know I keep reiterating this because I'm already picturing my comment section. Just because you have a pretty website doesn't mean you're a good developer. I get that, but you will earn that deeper look. And then hopefully upon that deeper look, that's when you really shine as well. You have to do both. There's the marketing design side to earn the deeper look. And then there's the developer side. Once they're looking deeper into you, you gotta have the goods. And that brings us to today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. Now we are iOS developers. We wanna build apps, fun projects, right? We're not web developers. so. As much as the developer inside you wants to build your own website, uh, there's an opportunity cost to that and it may not be worth it. So Squarespace is a great way to get your iOS developer personal website and portfolio up and running extremely quickly. And Squarespace has professionally designed themes, so your website is gonna look legit for relatively low effort. It has all the other good stuff too, like uh, you know SEO optimization, analytics, all that stuff. It's an all-in-one platform to just take care of your website needs. So when you're ready to get that iOS developer website or portfolio up and running, head on over to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And then when you're ready to actually launch that, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first website or domain. So now let's talk about resumes. I'm a big fan of the visual resume, as you see here uh, with mine. Now, uh, there can be some pushback for this. I know not everybody's a fan of this. And especially if you submit your resume to like a larger company where, where it's going into like a system and a database that they scrape for the information, these visual resumes uh, don't really do well in that scenario. So maybe you have two different versions, but again, this video is targeted at kind of the smaller startup uh, or smaller companies that, you know, human beings are actually reviewing all these submissions. So in that case, I think having a visual resume uh, it is huge. It makes you stand out way above the rest. And in my experience, again, reviewing over a hundred of these, that's because like, look at these wall of text resumes, right? By the time you're on resume number 63 of this, like it's just human nature for like your eyes to start to cross and just be like, okay. Um, you, you just, you start skimming them like less and less and less, right? Cause it's just a lot of work to go through those walls of text resumes. However, when you get a nicely designed one with good visual hierarchy, like your eyes know where to go, it's very, very skimmable. That's a big thing here is I think the resume needs to be extremely skimmable. Like you, you've heard this before, like you may hear a different stat, but it's like, you know, you, you, the reviewer is going to give your resume six seconds, right? You got to stand out in those six seconds. So 
if you give them a wall of black and white text, it's hard for, for the right information to pop out. But if you have a nicely designed resume with negative space, different you know font weights and sizes to really make the important information pop off the page so they can skim it in six seconds, and if it's the right information you want to display, uh, again, that's you're, you're golden. And I've done a video about how I built my resume here. I'll do the link in the description. But again, I want to reiterate that this visual resume is kind of geared towards these smaller companies. Again, larger companies it may not be the best thing. Just quick little caveat. And then lastly, if you have an app on the App Store, which if you're applying for an iOS developer job, I assume you do, take the time to design and make your App Store marketing page like look good. Have great screenshots, make a great app icon. Uh, I, I know this is sounding like we're designers and marketers. We're, you know, we're developers. We're not designers or marketers. But I would argue that in this phase of the game, the earning the deeper look, that's exactly what we are, is marketers, right? You got to market yourself to earn the deeper look. So... Again, when I go to an, when I see somebody submitted an app and I see a rudimentary, horrible app icon, no effort put into their app app store page, that just says a lot. It just it, you're, you're giving the wrong first impression. However, the flip side, beautiful app icon, you can tell there's been time put into that app marketing page, great screenshots, great descriptions. Again, that says a lot in the positive light. So. Anyway, I hope I've given some good advice. A huge, huge disclaimer. This is not the end-all be-all advice. This is just my point of view on interviewing and hiring for a small startup. You can that, that, That's the crazy thing about hiring is you can ask 10 different people their opinion on hiring, you're gonna get 10 different answers. So I don't claim to be the expert. I don't claim that this is the only advice you need. Again, this is one data point. Like take this and then go listen to 10 other people talk about hiring and then put that all together in your brain to do what works best for you. So hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.